Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series programming Simple Floppy Robin uh, with Cocos 2 dx for Android. So last video we added the tube class and I made uh, an error in the class or forgot something. In the start function in ctube obviously we need to position the tube to the right hand side of the screen otherwise we aren't going to see the tube. So I just want to say this and set position ccp and then we want our x offset plus the screen width and as our y we just want this get position y which is already here a bit of a glaring silly error there okay so are we missing a bracket as well yes okay so that's now done we want to think about how the tubes actually come on the screen. If you've noticed in the download from the last video, maybe that there was tube-hd. I've added that into the resources on the Xcode project, and this is what it looks like. It's made big enough so that we can always use the same one, and the bits we don't need, obviously, are just off screen so we don't notice. So we have three variations of tubes that can appear on the screen. We have a tube that appears like this, going from top to bottom, one going from bottom towards the top, leaving a gap, and then a pair of them together one at the top, one at the bottom, with a gap in between them. And to be able to deal with this, we need to add some constants into our uh, application before we actually start adding the tube, so we can keep things relatively uh, consistent. The first one I want to do is add the z-index for the tube, and it's going to get 35, and it's going to be added there. So they appear in front of mountains, but the floor and the trees, and the robin obviously, appear in front of the, the tubes. The next thing I want to think about adding in is you remember that we talked about the offset x and the inactive x for the tube. So I'm just going to make some space uh, down here, scroll this all up to the top of the screen a bit. Okay, so I'm going to define then uh, k tube and offset x as 100 and then define and k tube inactive x as minus 1000. Okay, now when we think about spawning the tubes, and what I mean by spawning is a new one created and set moving across the screen, we want those to happen at regular intervals but not the same interval. So I've decided that, well I thought what looked best was to have a minimum of one and a half seconds and a max of, of 3.5 seconds. So we'll define here Okay, uh, tube spawn min time, so minimum time, and we'll set this to 1.5 seconds, and define then a okay, K tube uh, spawn time variance, and we'll set this to 20. And the reason is I'm going to do a random between 0 and 2 seconds. Um, but I'm going to do it as an integer from 1 to 20 and divide it by 10 and cast it to a float. You'll see later on. There are other ways of doing it. I decided to do it that way. And now we need to think about the positioning of the tubes. And if you imagine in your mind one a single tube from the top, hanging from the top, then that has a gap from its base to the bottom of the screen. But what we want to do is we want to say that when it hangs from the top, it's got to at least be so far down the screen anyway. So it's got to, uh, what we call the single top. And then it's also can only go to a limited amount down the screen, which will be actually in the middle of the, the, the screen. And the same for one that's at the bottom. So what I'm trying to say there is there are a set of constants that we need to define for the positioning within certain limits. So that it's not right at the top of the screen or right at the bottom of the screen or uh, a silly amount down the screen or up the screen. So we need four constants to do that. I'm going to call them k single because it's a single tube and I'm going to call it a single gap top and that's going to be 480. So just as reference this is the if one is coming down from the top of the screen it'll at least be at the bottom of it at least be a y of 480 so it won't be any higher than that. And then the same for the the bottom k okay, single gap and bottom I'll set this to 160. The next thing I want to do is actually set some min and maxes for the amount of space that it actually leaves for the robin to fly through. So we'll k single gap max and we'll set that to 320 and we'll define k single gap min 
and the minimum gap for the robin will be 160. The next thing I want to do is do these also then for the case where we have a pair or a double, so I'll call it double and just copy and replace the single. And these are all values we can change later on if they don't work very well or something like that. But I want 4, 540, so is, if you imagine the pair, the top of the one of the pair will be at most 540 high, the bottom one 120, so this is a slightly bigger range than it was for the single ones because we've got a pair together. We'll have the max gap between them though at 280 and the minimum gap at 120, so it's a slightly smaller gap left as well. So that's all the constants we need to add for our tubes. And now what we need to do is jump into hello world scene.h and start adding in some variables and functions that we're going to need for dealing with the tubes. The first thing we'll need is we'll need an array of our tubes. So that's defined like so. And the way things are going to work with the spawning is we're going to have a next spawn time a, a, a time we're going to set randomly a time between one and a half and three and a half seconds for spawning our tube and we'll store this in a float and we'll call this next spawn time. What we'll also do is keep track of how long it's been since the last spawn so we'll call that last uh, whoops, last spawn time and what we also need to do is obviously we need to know whether we're going to show the tubes or not and increment these times and so we need to know whether a game has been started or not, yes or no. Another thing we need to do is we, because when the game is stopped at the moment, we simply call um, the stop clouds to stop everything inside the clouds array. Well, we're actually going to need to do some extra stuff with the tubes because they need removing from the screen and we need to reset some values here. So we're going to add in a function called stop game like so. And what we'll do now then is we'll just go into the hello world scene.cpp and just make sure we initialize some stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to initialize the tubes array and say that's equal to a new cc array like so, so we don't end up with any errors. And then I'm going to set the last spawn, sorry, the next spawn time so the time to the next spawn, it's a bit of a hack, I set that to 0.2 right at the uh, start of the game. And also now I'll add in this stop game function. And inside this stop game here, I'm going to call the stop clouds, like so. And what I'm also going to do inside the stop game function here then is, and I'm just checking my reference to make sure I haven't missed something because something's just uh, popped into my mind, is set the game started then to oh, started then equal to false. The other thing we want to be able to do, and or the other thing I want to do obviously is then set the uh, next spawn time equal to 0.2. Okay, and one last thing I want to do in this video because we're coming up to 10 minutes and the next section is a lot is a bit longer, it's probably 15, 20 minutes, that'll be the next video. But for now, is when we call the stop clouds, I actually want to stop the tubes as well, except they'll disappear as we know from the screen when stop is called. So I'm just going to copy this code here, change this to tube, and I'm going to change the type here to, uh, well, I'm going to change this to tubes, and I'm going to change this to C tube, and so, and set tube, and probably at the top of the file I need to also include here the header file for C tube as well, so at least it can access all of the details inside that. And things seem to build and seem to be okay. Good. Okay then, so we've added in our stopping of the tubes, taking them off the screen. We've got our stop game function in where date game started is false. The next spawn time is 0 0.2 so that when we start the next game we instantly generate uh, a tube. The next video then will actually get on with 
the spawning of the tubes and like I said I left that out from this video because it's a bit, com bit more complicated and involved and I didn't want this video to run too long. What I'm going to do is quickly run the application here and just check that it is indeed working still and I haven't broken anything. Good, I don't seem to have. And one thing, I don't know whether I mentioned this in the last video or not, I think I did, but just in case I didn't, just a reminder that the code that was inside a few videos ago, Touches Ended, has been moved to Touches Began, so you should have this code here like this inside Touches Began. Okay, enough of that. That's it for this video. Next video, we'll actually get the tubes generating and scrolling across the screen. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.